Oh, I was gonna blow dry my bangs to make them look more presentable. I'm already sitting here. I'm not gonna do it now. Hi. Oh, what's that you see? Me with no makeup on? Look at that. What? What's that? Oh, not active zits that hurt? What's this? What are these up here? No zits, ma'am. Sir? I'm gonna need to see some paperwork for that good skin. Wow, we did it, guys. We made it. We did it. Somehow, through it all, I got good skin. Shouldn't have happened. Definitely not to me, I'm a terrible person, but somehow I got good skin. Here's how, it's called drugs. <laughs> so the funny thing about this video is, I posted a video like a couple months ago, I guess now in February, that was titled, my skin has never been worse, or it's never been this bad. I can't remember, either way it was negative. So it'll be funny to see if this video does worse because people love to kick you when you're down. Or maybe they just love to relate to you when you're feeling down because everyone's feeling down. That's, I think that's more likely. So yes, this video is a completely narcissistic victory lap of skincare wonderfulness. But also, I wanted to talk to you because I've, I've just been doing a lot of skincare updates on my social media, on Instagram, cool. on Twitter. In general, I've just gotten a lot of questions, I've gotten a lot of assumptions, I've gotten a lot of people being like, what the f*** you were on Accutane? And I just kinda wanted to come on here and dispel the rumors and just talk, honestly, all right? Also, I got a lot of questions about my daily makeup routine because now that I'm one of those people, I now have a whole new makeup avenue I can go down. Oh, what's that, a brand deal? Yeah. Gotta make money somehow. Hi, today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. As you guys know, I have used slash worked with BetterHelp in the past. I've had nothing but good experiences with them. Personally, I was going through a pretty rough time last year. It, there was a lot going on in the background that I haven't really talked about in my videos that maybe one day I will completely open up about, but uh, yeah, it was just a rough year last year and it was a lot of muddling through my thoughts on things, getting to the point where I could talk about something without uh, second guessing myself or second guessing my feelings and a lot of that realization happened through BetterHelp because uh, if you don't know about BetterHelp, it's affordable private online counseling, get access to licensed, trained, fully accredited counselors and therapists. They're LGBTQ plus friendly, and they're great for couples counseling. All you need to do is go to betterhelp.com slash Arden, and that link also helps me out. You can fill out a questionnaire, they'll match you with a counselor who's perfect for you, and you can start counseling today. It's also more affordable than traditional in-person counseling. Pricing is between $35 and $65 a week for unlimited counseling, meaning you are connected with the counselor the entire time via phone or computer. So if you're traveling, you can still talk to your therapist, and if you find a therapist that isn't your favorite person in the entire world, you can always switch, which is great. Best of all, you can connect from home, which is one of the biggest reasons why people don't get counseling. Also, a lot of people aren't comfortable crying or getting emotional in front of people, which I also understand, so doing something online and being able to like cut off a video feed and only talk on the phone or only text can be super helpful. If you're someone who is trying to take the first steps in uh, participating in therapy, I think this is a really, really great way to get comfortable with the idea of sharing your emotions with other people. Thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring. Now back into the acne, let's go, head first. Pew. So first off, if this is your first video of mine and you have no fucking clue what I'm talking about, hi, hello, my name's Arden. I posted a video a couple months ago talking about how bad my skin was while it was purging on Accutane, uh, and it looked like this. Hachi mama, that's bad. Oh. Yeah, showed that to my dermatologist a week ago and he was like so proud of his good work. And it was like, I don't know, it was like he was my like birthing doctor or something. And I was like, look at what you brought into this world. And like, he was really proud of himself too. Like he was like, yep, yep, that's damn good skin right there. Who's texting? So one thing I realized about acne is you either got it or you don't. There's no in between. And it is horrible to deal with. I, like I have said previously, spent 10 years trying to get rid of my acne. From when I was like 14, 13 years old. What is it? Which one is it? Which one's doing it? Is this computer? Oh, is this. 
so I've been trying to get rid of it ever since I was like a young ling, a young one, very young. And I did everything. I did antibiotics, I bought every system that you can f***ing think of. Proactive? Get out of here! I'm pissed off at Proactive. I can't tell you how much money I spent on that shit. If it works for you, that's great. <laughs> it did not work for me. Because I had severe cystic acne and I wanted to treat it like I didn't have an actual medical issue. And that was where the problem lied, was that I would go to dermatologists and want to just get like the run of the mill thing that anyone could use. I was taking way too many antibiotics for me to be comfortable because I am worried about antibiotic resistant superbugs. I'm very worried about that kind of thing. <laughs> Although I don't know if that counts for like skincare antibiotics. Are antibiotics all the same thing? I should do more research. Should stop reading Reddit. I knew that I needed to be on something more heavy duty, but I was always scared because of medical phobias. If you watched my last video about my skin, you already know all of this. When I started going on it, my dermatologist in the UK recommended that I go on 30 milligrams. And to anyone who's taken Accutane, you know that on average, that's a very low dose. Most people get kind of pressured into taking a very, very high dose. What you really want to do is build up a reserve of a vitamin A overdose, basically. That's what it does. That's why you have to get your blood tests checked because they have to make sure that it doesn't affect your liver really deeply because you are processing an overdose in your body when you take Accutane. That's why you have so many side effects. And that's why you can have severely deformed children, which the US is very concerned about. And oh my God, I could go on a whole rant about that because it is the most irritating Long. process getting Accutane in the US. God bless all my ladies in the US that have taken Accutane that have had to go through multiple pregnancy tests. The iPledge system can suck my butthole. I hate it so much. It's so f***ing annoying and pointless and sexist. Anyways, that being said, <laughs> clearly I've been irritated about this. Um, <laughs> so Accutane, uh, it's basically an overdose. It causes your oil glands to like shrivel up and die. <laughs> like you just don't have any oil or moisture left in your body. So it can cause a lot of severe side effects. That's why people also go through bouts of depression because your body does not know how to produce like any kind of lubrication anymore. It's kind of like panic mode for your body. So it manifests itself in a lot of different ways. When you go on a lower dose, you have less of those side effects. So even for example, I have a friend who started on 30 milligrams and he got bumped up to 40 milligrams. And just that little bump up caused him to have an extra purge where he like had more pimples than his like initial probably two month in purge like most people get. Um, and then he also started getting incredibly fatigued. He's a professional athlete and he was having a lot of trouble just getting through like the basic requirements of things that he had been doing his whole life. So this is something that like can severely affect you, even just that 10 milligram hit up. If you're someone who has been considering Accutane and the whole thing scares you and the idea of being really sick and frail and like fragile all the time makes you scared, A, it's gonna happen, baby. That's just how it is. Even I feel fragile, but I feel a lot better because I'm on a lower dose. If your dermatologist is trying to convince you to take like 70 milligrams and you are someone who is like 120 pounds, you don't, you, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I don't think you need it. Talking to my dermatologist, by the way, this is all word of mouth from one doctor, but I really love him because he fixed my skin. There's evidence on my face that this works, okay? It's a, a tiny bit anecdotal, but it also, it worked, okay? There's no actual evidence that you need to be on isotretinoin on a high dose for a short period of time if you can handle a lower dose for a longer period of time. So that's basically what I am doing. I am still on isotretinoin, Accutane or Roaccutane, and I will be on it into July because it's building up this amount of milligram overdose that your body processes that once you reach that cap, then you finish your full course and you see like maximum benefits. But most of the time in the US or with traditional dermatologists, everyone has kind of been taught to blow all of that out at one point. So like taking 60 milligrams or 50 milligrams and just like getting it all in as quickly as possible so that you don't have to be on the course as long. But ultimately, you suffer more. <laughs> your ears peel, your lips fall off every two seconds, like you look like a zombie, and it's because you're having like twice as much as what I'm having. If you look at my skin right now, I'll get like up close and personal. Hi, how are you? Why is this single hair? 
out of the way. I, this is why I wanted to blow dry my hair. I'm Arden Skin. Lovely to meet you. I have Cetaphil moisturizer on right now, and although I have like some little scarring, if you look, my skin doesn't look that dry, which is something that's very common with Accutane. My lips look a little dry. I have Aquaphor on them right now, but in general, I'm not peeling anymore, like three months in, four months in. I'm not peeling anymore. And I got over that area very quickly. I don't have eczema on my skin anymore. And from what I've seen on Reddit and on the r slash Accutane subreddit, that's a very big thing is that most of these symptoms stay for a really long time. Even after you take Accutane, it can stay in your system for a while, which is good because it means that you're gonna continue to have great skin. But you can continue to suffer. I also get random things like I got a pimple on my butt the other day and I've never had body acne in my life. And I just had like a pimple square on my right butt cheek. And I was like, what are you doing there? And also I'm mad because I can't reach over and pop you very efficiently. But also like my joints hurt sometimes. And when I sleep, my I get kind of like temporary arthritis from Accutane, but I could not imagine being on twice the dose that I am. I could not imagine. It would be so painful because it's already painful. It's already a hard thing to go through. So all I would say for people who are very scared about Accutane and scared about like taking a really high dose, ask your dermatologist about taking a lower dose for a longer amount of time because it has been a lifesaver for me. And I think it was one of the smartest things that my doctor did because originally when he told me that he only wanted me to be on 30 milligrams, I was kind of like, Wait, but there are people online taking like 60 milligrams. Can't you at least give me like 40 milligrams? So I feel like I'm actually doing something. And he was like, no, you don't need to be on that. I think it's like, it's unnecessary. Most people do a one to one ratio. For each kilogram, you would do a milligram. So for me, I would have like 52 milligrams of Rakutane. Um, and my dermatologist said that what he has been doing recently for his patients is doing half of that, so 0.5. And so that's where I landed right around 30 milligrams. And I have seen amazing results without shaving off my face. But anyways, that, that's the deal. That's the deal. Skin's feeling great. Feeling good, feeling real good. I thought I'd give you, in case you are going through Accutane or you are thinking about going on Accutane, I thought I'd give you some of my like product wow. tips and tricks or advice. First of all, Cetaphil. Bing. Oh, less than $10, giant ass Cetaphil pump. Use it everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, use it everywhere. I put it on my face, I put it on my eczema hands, I would put it on my body. Like stay away from fragrance because it'll aggravate dry skin. Just use the gentlest, most base shit you can find, which is usually Cetaphil. CeraVe is amazing, any kind of like soothing, OT milky thing is a delight. This, this, this right here. This is the Aquaphor Healing Ointment. Megan, Megan Rinks, thank you, darling, for telling me about this because this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. For anyone who has severely chapped lips, this is so, so good. I put this on everything. I get really bad hangnails because I pick and bite my nails. I put this on my hangnails. I put it on everything. It is so good. It's basically like Neosporin, but you can use it on your lips. You can use it on like any kind of little crack or crevice you have. If your eczema is really bad, you can use it as kind of like a protective layer. Um, I know when I would go running, my skin, my eczema would flare up because it, like sun exposure and wind and like sweating and all of that combined would just make my eczema really flare. And so I would put this on the edges of my hand where I would get eczema. Um, so this, so, so, so highly recommend. S P. If you are not wearing sunscreen just as a general thing, as a person, as a human being with skin, honey babe, your skin is your largest organ. Let's take care of it, okay? You wouldn't just lay your heart out in the sun and let it just be there getting grizzled. You would put SPF on it. So put SPF on your body and your skin and your face in particular and your neck and your high points. Anywhere that you hit a lot of sun, put sunscreen on. Even when I was wearing sunscreen, I was still getting weird tans. Like, I don't know if you can see how like faintly pale my inner arm is here. <laughs> That's from running because when I run, I run like this. I just realized I run like a cartoon character. Like I legitimately run like this. 
Oh God. I'm gonna put on this Glossier Invisible Shield because I just want more SPF in my life. This one is fragranced, but it doesn't bother my skin, which is good. It doesn't make me break out. Although, nothing makes me break out anymore. I could smear my face with shing and I wouldn't, well, maybe, maybe I would break out. But I can do absolutely anything. And that's one thing that I am so grateful and thankful that I went on Accutane because now I'm not worried about random sh breaking me out. Like the stupidest wow. would break me out. Like I would lay down on my boyfriend's chest to take a nap and I would wake up with like a breakout already like surfacing. Like my skin did not want me to be in love. It was, it was honestly a very big mood killer. It was horrible. And it's not just because of the vanity. It was because it was painful because these cysts would be under my skin and right near my jaw. And you know, if you're someone who has like cystic acne that's near the bone, it wow. hurts. <laughs> This is my favorite foundation, Clinique, man. They test on animals. I didn't know when I bought this. I just saw it and I saw it even better. It was when my skin was really breaking out and I was just looking for like really gentle fragrance free stuff. And online, I saw somewhere that said, Clinique, they make like the best fragrance free foundations. And so I was like, cool. I'm not gonna look anywhere else on the internet. I'm gonna trust this single opinion. I used it and then of course, like 15 million people on the internet were like, do you hate rabbits? Um, but anyways, I'm gonna use this rabbit killer foundation because I am a heathen and I deserve to go to hell. I like this stuff too because it does have SPF in it, so I'll still double up. I think it was Lucy Williams who was saying on her Instagram story that she doesn't always trust the SPF in products, so she'll put SPF on before she puts on product. I'm going out in the sun today. I'm gonna go to a little like park and I'm gonna like have a little picnic and it's gonna be very cute. And I'm wearing a little sundress and like I decided to actually wear a bra today. So like that's a whole thing. I'm gonna just buff this in with this Tarte brush. And because my skin is good, I don't have to do 10 layers of thick foundation. Like cut to the way my skin looked in my, my skin has never been worse video. That foundation, Lord help us all. That was the thickest shit I've ever put on my face. And it was because I was so desperate to cover up all my acne. I am very good about shoving my emotions down in the moment. That's what, growing up Southern and conservative will do to you. Then when I'm out of the situation, I'm like, geez, I was miserable. And that's how that like three week stint of Accutane felt. I was doing well because even though my skin was purging during that stage, I was exercising a wow. ton and that helped so much. Like, honey, why do you think people are marathon runners? Because honey, it feels great. That was what got me through it all. 100% was like exercising, climbing, because now she's like, a jacked, jacked babe. Re-engaging with my body just felt good when my skin was so messed up that I needed to love something on me and it was my body, love my body. Because I'm on Accutane, my skin gets very dry so I don't tend to powder my face except for in like very obvious areas that I might need to powder but I don't get really oily anymore so I'm not like stressed about getting oily throughout the day. So like I said we're doing very easy breezy makeup today nothing like crazy or fierce or like whatever. So I'm gonna go in with this little uh, angled brush and this hourglass like bronzy brick situation. I've had this for such a long time. I've had this for such a long time. Um, but it is the ambient lighting power powder. It's the ambient lighting powder in radiant light. Yes, ma'am. I am just going to stamp this on the sides of my face. Now that I'm getting to the point where my acne is gone, naturally you have to obsess about something else, right? Like you, you have to create problems for yourself in your life. Should I do like facialist situation? for this like little scar situation here or like any of the scarring that I have. None of it's really bad. And I also love to do this like on the sides of my nose. On my nose. Cause it makes you look like you've touched sunlight in the last year. Also one other thing that I love is this NARS Illuminator, the Super Radiance Booster. I, I put this in my foundation sometimes and it looks so good. 
So if you're looking for a good highlighter, this is bomb. But what I'm actually gonna do is just cover my cheeks with this Peach Party by uh, Soap and Glory. Basically like a drugstore dupe for the Bobbi Brown blush brick thing or shimmer brick, I don't even know. I've never had one in my life, but <laughs> hear great things. Um, I'm gonna dip into this and just cover my cheeks and kind of the top of my cheekbones with this because it's sort of like illuminator blush all in one. And I'm all about all in one products. Oh boy, howdy am I. Because now that I don't have to spend time on my makeup because I have bad skin, I wanna do it as quickly as possible. I realize that about myself. I don't actually like doing makeup that much. I like doing it when I want to, but not when I have to because my skin's so bad. That's the worst kind of makeup to have to do because you don't even like it by the end of it. You like look at your face and you're like, I just look kind of waxy and a little timid and scared of the world. But look how lovely, like just that little flush. Mm. More. That might've been a bad idea. No, more. So next up, eyebrows, Glossier Boy Brow. Duh, adoy. The new commercial, the boy brow commercial that's like, so that song is awesome. It's called Goody Bag by Still Woozy. And I started like a radio playlist of that song. And it is some of my favorite music I've discovered in the last month. So highly recommend if you've ever wanted a good music, like just to chill or work and I don't know, live your wow. best life. That radio is sick nasty. I love it. And this is the good part about having tiny bangs is that they do not get in the way of doing your eyebrows. Yes, fluffy, flirty brows. And then I'm gonna go in with my favorite mascara, my favorite mascara, by Terry Mascara, terrib terribly, 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 terribly. Well, let me tell you, it's, it, it is anything but terrible. It's very good, it's very good mascara. <laughs> this tube is also definitely six months old, so it needs to go, like she is on her way out the door, but I'm gonna use it like one last time. Victory lap in this video. Um, also just my Tweezerman rose gold eyelash curler. Convinced this is the best eyelash curler of all time, by the way, just drugstore best eyelash curler I've ever used. Also, oddly enough, my eyelashes have been doing really well. For those of you who know that I suffer with trichotillomania, I think maybe a lot of the stress that I was feeling that would cause me to like have bouts of trick over and over again was because I was just obsessing about how bad my skin was. So now that my skin's been getting better, I have less things to obsess about and uh, I'm less tempted to pull out my eyelashes, which is good because I'm anxious or stressed. Oh, this is one other thing I wanted to talk about and I'm gonna talk about it while I'm doing my mascara. So I was messaging back and forth with this person on Instagram. Um, shout out to my homie in Portugal, you're a sweetheart. Thanks for messaging me. Anyways, so I was messaging this girl who was telling me that uh, a guy stopped her on the street because of her acne, saying that she should use this special cream or treatment or whatever that he was trying to sell to her and like would not leave her alone. Um, and I just wanna say, wow. Don't, like, don't. Here's the thing, for people who have acne, we have tried everything. Your little crapshoot cream that you decided to create in your mother's basement with fungus and toe cream is not going to f***ing help, all right? Because we've tried everything. Trust me, I have sacrificed a lot of lambs to Satan to get rid of my acne and nothing happened until I went on Accutane. So. Don't try to tell people what to do when they have bad acne. I was on Accutane uh, with one of the worst purges and I had a facialist stop me and tell me that I was poisoning my body and that I just needed to drink celery juice for my face to get fixed. If you don't think that I've been on every diet for like six months to a year at a time to try to fix my acne naturally for the last six or seven years, you're crazy. I'm a white girl that's on the internet. I've tried every kooky treatment, all right? And so Accutane was my last resort. Don't try to get me to go off of it. I don't need your crackpot ideas about what I should do and what I shouldn't do. Get out of here with that nonsense. I'm gonna let a doctor tell me what to do, not you. Don't try to tell people with acne how to fix it because they already have. They have already tried. Congratulate them when they do fix it, but don't try to tell them to fix it. 
Some people don't mind having acne. Some people have lent in and been like, you know what? It's just my body. It's how my skin is. I cannot help it. So whatever. And like, I fully appreciate that too. I was at that point last year when I was like totally given up, totally said, I'm just going to always have acne. It's I had convinced myself that it was just stress related, which is probably true and hormonal. And like, that's just what my, my, my lady body wanted to do sometimes. And like, I was just going to give up and be okay with it. But for those of you who are just like, yeah, this is who I am and this is how it is. Good for you. Who the Bong. cares? Your skin is no one else's business. So look at this mascara. Stop. It's so nice. It's so good. It's reached that point of dried out where it's just like good mascara. You know what I mean? I love dried out mascara. I'm gross. The last thing that we're gonna do because we're basic now, we basic, is lip gloss. Yay! So these NARS lip glosses, they're the Lip Gloss Brilliant. This is in Mythic Red, which is just not a red, but that's okay. These are some of the best new lip product releases I have tried in such a long time. I love these lip glosses. I have like every color. They're so good. <laughs> oh, yes, God. Look how opaque that is. That is just like not a lip gloss. It's like a full lip color. There's no tackiness. It's just like the perfect lip gloss. It's so good. That is what I've been doing on my face since my skin has been decent and, and just behaving and got tamped down by Mother Accutane. Like, mama was having no more shit. The kids needed to clean up their rooms, and they did. My glands, my oil glands, my sebaceous glands have straightened up their act, and I'm proud of it. Talk to your doctor. That's probably the, the biggest thing. Talk to your doctor. Don't just read stuff online. Don't just get anecdotal evidence from friends or random YouTubers. Go to a doctor. Um, and talk about the issues you're having with your skin. And if you don't like the doctor that you're going to, go to a different doctor. <laughs> because I know I did that. I went to so many dermatologists before I found one that really knew what I was trying to do and knew that I didn't want to be miserable for like six months. Don't be scared if you've been thinking about going on Accutane. So many people go on it every year. You would not believe how many people in your life that you were envious of their skin have been on Accutane. That's what I learned because the moment I started going, yeah, I'm on Accutane and finally like things are starting to look up. Everyone in my life was like, oh, I was on Accutane in high school. And my skin's never been better. Oh, I was on Accutane in college. Oh, I'm a movie star and I was on Accutane six months ago. People with pretty beautiful skin usually put a lot of money, time, and effort behind it unless they are just genetically blessed, which is also a true thing. Looking at you, Liam Ray Johnson. Have you ever seen her skin? It's flawless. Thanks for watching my uh, victory lap. My, oh boy, oh boy, howdy, are my feet just super asleep. All right. <sighs> On that note, I'm gonna crouch and do this. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you want more of this nonsense and I'll see you guys for the next video. Bye. Once again, before this video is over, I wanted to pop back in and say thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. Betterhelp.com slash Arden if you wanna go sign up. Helps me, helps the channel. Gives me some of that cash dollar dollar, which would be very dope right now. As you know, I'm trying to move to a place that has an office, so. That's my life. Thank you so much and bye. <laughs>